is preparing to stream to live stream the webinar. I am so excited. So if I start getting all excited and jumping around, you'll know why. <laughs> okay, I've lost something. Okay. Is it already live? Yep. Okay. Nope, 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 nope. It's not live yet. It's not live yet. All right. Give me a second. I am so excited. So if I start getting all excited and jumping around, you'll know why. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay, I have it. <laughs> okay, great. Now we are live. Awesome. Thank you so much. So you can still hear me. And uh, I want to say good morning and welcome everyone to this 180 degree Facebook live interview with uh, my really, really good client and uh, colleague, uh, Jackie Gilliatt. Jackie lives in London. She is a barrister, which in uh, American means she's a trial lawyer. She's been a trial lawyer for 26 years, and she's been specializing in child protection. So Jackie, welcome to this Facebook Live. Thank you so much for Pleasure. taking time out of your really, really busy schedule, which I know, because we work together, um, to, to come on to this Facebook Live and talk about what it is that you have uh, gleaned, learned, experienced in working with me. So um, I have a couple of questions and, and you, you have your coffee because this, this is our morning coffee date. Our, yes, I uh, love that cup and I love that blouse. That's absolutely Thank you. gorgeous. Wow. Okay. So we're going to, you know, I'm going to uh, have you do a lot of the talking. I'm not going to do most of the talking because this is an interview. So I'm going to ask you, Jackie, the first question, what was life and your relationship to time like before you took 180 degree time management what was going on with you um well i i suppose the first word that comes into my head is overwhelm mm. and i constantly felt like i was fighting fires yeah um and you know rushing from one thing to the next mm. and um making endless lists that I never got to the end of. <laughs> right. So it was very stressful. Wow. Very stressful. I mean, I do a stressful job anyway. Yeah. But um, it didn't help. Right. The, the time was not under my control at all. Mm. That's how it felt. Wow. Yeah, <clears throat> I understand that. And so the two worm words that uh, came across there were stress and overwhelm. Yeah, and I guess it also felt like there was never enough of it, time. Uh -huh. Never, ever enough yeah, time. Right. Yeah, I totally get that. So what would you say, you know, the stress and the overwhelm, we can all relate to that. Those are pretty, you know, uh, general terms. We all use those terms. Oh, I'm stressed. Oh, I'm overwhelmed right now. But what were the costs? Like, what were the biggest costs to yourself, your, your job, your career, your relationship, your hobbies? things that you wanted to do? What were, what were the biggest costs of being so overwhelmed and stressed? Um, well, it, it would mean that I, I kind of couldn't, I could not face working out what I needed to do. Mm. I couldn't face thinking about doing it. And so often I quite, I quite often didn't do it mm -hmm. because I was stressed and overwhelmed and I needed a break. Right. Um, and so, but I, because the break wasn't planned either, <laughs> the, the, the break wasn't necessarily spent on doing what I enjoy doing or, or what I'm committed to doing in my spare time, in my mm -hmm. free time, my leisure time. Um, and then of course you'd wake up in the morning and you'd still have that great long list of things to do. Plus there were other things that you'd sort of forgotten or would, would just become urgent because you hadn't done them, et cetera. So it oh, was wow. a completely vicious circle. Yeah. Completely wow. vicious circle. Wow. I really, really get that. And would you say that uh, that was your worst case scenario, that vicious circle of waking up into, you know, things that are already not done? You're like, I'm, it, it sounds like you woke up into, I'm already behind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, you know, when you've been doing that for uh, a good bit of time, what is like your worst case scenario? Um, if you had a minute to, to think about that. Um, well, I don't know if you mean in terms of how I was feeling or what was going on. Both. Um, Both. But it, it, it particularly often meant that 
some very important things didn't get done, like taxes and mm. um, and some of the just you know cat follow up from my cases, which is yeah. very important. Yeah. Um, and so you know, I I upset people by not doing things. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, I I it certainly affected sleep and general. A general sense of well-being just wasn't there, right? Um, and it, 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 you then end up feeling very bad about yourself because you're not performing, you're not doing what you know you should have done, and that's just constantly nagging at you. Oh wow, that sounds hellish. Hmm, it wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, totally get that. So, wow. So okay. So it sounds also, you know, what you said about the taxes and anything and everything. And I know that, you know, anybody that's watching this or will watch it later on can, can identify with that. I, you are not the first uh, client that I have spoken with that says, oh, the taxes are late. So actually it costs you money. Yeah. 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 It costs you money. It costs you health. It costs you, you know, rest. That's pretty big. You know, yeah. that's like, you know, money, health, rest what else is there? So it's like you were, you're making money, but at the same time, you're losing money because the, you know, things are not getting done. And then you're upsetting people. Um, I know a lot of people talk about that, you know, what do I do when I'm going to miss a deadline, for example, and, you know, constantly being at the threat of not delivering is, mm -hmm. is incredibly stressful for someone who is as professional as you are in your job. Right. Mm -hmm. So it also sounds like, um, a little bit like you, you couldn't you couldn't feel as good about yourself doing your job as you'd like to. No, and you can't you can't then grant yourself the time to do some of the things that might actually make you better at your job because oh, wow. you're you're too busy just getting the you know the basics in place all the time. Mm -hmm. And so that time to read something interesting or have an interesting conversation with someone is just not available. Right. Well, it feels like it isn't. It feels like it isn't. It feels yeah. like it isn't. Yeah. What about, you know, I know we've been talking a little bit about this, but how does it impact career advancement? You know, well, that's that's exactly what I mean. You, okay. you, you can't do those things. Um, you're just sort of stumbling from one day to the next. And so it, it you, 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 your growth and development tends to be you think I think of that as a luxury. Hmm. Well, I did anyway, you know, and so it goes it, it goes to the bottom of the list all the time hmm. because there's so many other things shouting at your head. Right. And this is while you are leading a successful career. So you're successful. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So this is this is what's the, I think this is the interesting bit about, you know, the people that um, apply for and, and do manage to get accepted at 180 degree time management. You guys are successful. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't failing. Right. Um, but, but I wasn't flying either. Right. So it's, so would you say the difference is the, the difference is between, you know, not failing and thriving? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. We'll talk a little bit about that, you know, when we talk about the other side of the fence, you know, so I'm going to ask you now about the other side of the fence. Um, what had you say yes to 180 degree time management and you can answer two questions at once what had you say yes and then what makes it a, a unique and sustainable product so I don't know which one you want to answer first um well the, the what what had me say yes well I knew you so you were a big part of it because okay. um I'd worked with you before and I mm -hmm. so I knew that there would be value I knew I needed help mm -hmm. um and Thank I, you. I knew I didn't know where to start. You know, oh, wow. I kind of, we've talked a bit about this in the Facebook group. You know, I've, I've read all sorts of books about time management. I know the tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. What I don't know is why I'm not using them. <laughs> I've got lots of, I've got lots of tools and apps and, mm. you know, systems that I could think about using, but I, I wasn't doing it and and none of the not many of those systems anyway even try and get anywhere near what's going on in your head mm. and I know 
um, from other work we've done together that you know the person I talk to the most is myself. Um, okay. And um, but you're so familiar with the things that you're saying to yourself that you don't articulate them to other people and they don't get challenged by anybody. Right. So I could kind of half know all of that and I knew you would you would bring it out although not exactly how no right so, and then we did that um shorter short course together mm -hmm. and I got a lot out of that and I so I probably only did that just you know well I've got a problem with time management so let's give it a go <laughs> and uh, I know no I know I remember actually you, you'd done a presentation and you'd said some stuff about hop and stop thoughts and I was I, I'm quite taken with those so okay um, but I couldn't kind of quite see how to figure them out mm -hmm. and um you know because it's a bit like there are lots of proverbs like uh, a stitch in time saves nine mm -hmm. um and I you know you sort of know that sort of thing but they don't really that doesn't really relate to me that doesn't get me getting out of bed mm -hmm. um and the hop and stop thought you start thinking about well, what actually gets me out of bed you know what gets me going what can I say to myself that will so we started with that, then we did the course together and um, I, I certainly through that saw a lot about that I was constantly dithering about mm -hmm. big and small decisions, mm -hmm. overthinking everything, just on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Shall I do it this way? Shall I do it that way? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and not committing to anything. Right. And, and if you don't commit to anything, you don't get anything done. No. <laughs> so because it's yeah it was always it was it was always in my head it was never anywhere else right so right. those were all the things that that had me say yes and then is it a what sustainable it tool yes well it's partly that you know I'm now building up a collection of hop and stop thoughts and I started off putting them side by side but I realized actually I don't need that I just need oh. the hop thoughts actually okay. I just need a kind of bank of hop thoughts that every time I have a stop thought right so there are maybe they're you know slightly the ones we've worked on have been in almost like two different categories so there, there are thematic ones that perhaps are ones that I keep returning to mm -hmm. because of past conversations and past experiences mm -hmm. and and then there are sort of perhaps more general ones that everybody has. you get home you think oh I'm just too tired to do it right um and um it, it I suppose it's partly the conversations have enabled me to catch those stop thoughts as they happen mm -hmm. and then start thinking, well, hang on a minute. What, what, what else could I put in here, which is, which is going to stop me. Right. You know? And then actually it also enables me if I really am too tired, I can go to bed, you know, right. with, with, much more happily. Yeah. Um, than if, if it if I've just done it as a kind of habit right yeah right that's really really good and that's really really clear you know so um thank you for sharing that I know, you know most of you that are listening to this some of you may know hop and stop thoughts if you want to know more about hop and stop thoughts when we get to the end of this uh live interview I'm going to post some information where you can get in touch with me uh, where you can apply to join our group. Um, before we go any further with with the Jesse, what what do you what do you say about our group, Jackie? You know why why should someone who's listening to this apply to join our group at one, at the Gift of Time Management Lab on Facebook? Why should they do that? Um. Well, because there's you know, there's lots of little videos that you've put up with some interesting ideas about. <laughs> Think how we might think about where to start mm. um you know you've answered that question which I think was one a lot of people had was you know just don't know where to begin right um we I've had a debate with somebody um in comments and things about the difference between traditional time management approaches if you like and what you're doing and what you can personally give to somebody as opposed to what they can read about in a book right I saw that um, I saw that and that and I also I very much enjoyed reading comments by other people. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I, I also, you know, I am someone that likes tips and tricks. You know, if people have got tips and tricks, 
right you know they're really good because you can often convert the tip and trick into a into a, a hop thought wow um you know and i like somebody gives me a new app or an idea of how to do something that is in itself a hop for me right you know and i'll give you an example a bit later on but okay that, you know that that you know like a, 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 a gadget or a new way of doing something excites me so you know so it's 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 all about what people share in the group that's w- what makes it interesting right very good i, I really like that uh, i like the fact that you're talking about the engagement that's going on because we have we have pretty good engagement in our group mm. i would say um people are active you know i know that i've been on facebook and looked at a couple of other time management groups and i've only seen one other that is as active as we are with as many members as we have so far and people are joining all the time or they're applying to join all the time and i keep saying applying because you know unless you're invited by someone like jackie who is in the group who can vouch for you who knows that you're there for the right reasons you're there to you know to to interact and to engage and to talk about time management you know then uh, you have to go through a, a little tiny screening process we answer a few questions and, uh, you know, I, I take a look and see what is your interest in joining us at the Gift of Time Management Lab. And then, you know, I look at everyone else who's in the group and say, OK, are you a good match? So, um, you know, it's, it's really nice to, to watch the group grow and to watch you guys interact and then to be able to come in and just, you know, introduce a new topic or introduce a new problem and introduce some problem solving and then watch you guys run with it. So it's really been uh, great to see that. Okay, I'm going to come back to, um, I think you did say that, you know, uh, one of the things that makes uh, 180 degree time management unique and sustainable is that it is an individual product. So it's not like a generalized app. Mm. It's something that, you know, you're, you're actually having, you're, you're getting in touch with those internal thoughts, that internal dialogue that you have with yourself. Was that yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay. And then, and then also I feel that I have benefited from having, so the first time I worked with you on this, we did the one day course. Right. I'm getting more out of it being a regular thing. Okay. Um, partly because it gives me an accountability. I'm thinking, oh my God, I've got to do it. <laughs> you know, but I realized that actually that that's a hop thought, you know, that's yes. a hop thought for me that if I don't do it, so there's a negative way of looking at it. If I don't do mm-hmm. it, there'll be a, you know, somebody else is going to be disappointed in me. Right. Um, but there's also, you know, I, I I get something out of somebody being pleased with what I've done. Absolutely. So, you know, it's quite nice to say, hey, I've actually done it. And somebody says, well done. You know, that's that's a stroke. I like it. I understand that. And I think that we as adults need that because we don't get it very often. No. Right. Because no, no. I because kind of I'm just I'm just supposed to do that. You know, like a lot right. of the time, the things I get done, I'm just supposed to do them. They're part of my life. You know, right. I, I, I haven't got the benefit of having you know somebody say well done for getting the washing the dishes washed you know da, da, da. which <laughs> which some some of the stuff I'm dealing with is in that category so totally. it's quite nice to have someone say well done you finally did it you know blah, blah, blah. that is awesome yeah. and and that you know just to explain a little bit you know this uh, Jackie has been with me throughout the entire development of this product so we go back some years when you know the um, first thing I did was of course a seminar. You know, I did a, an introduction to this program and then I did a seminar, a two day seminar that Jackie attended. And then we did some, what we're doing now is working online one-to-one. Um, I do offer one-to-one uh, uh, coaching. And then the latest development is, and one of the people in our group is actually on that course, uh, is a eight session webinar series which covers the exact same material and I walk you through it and there's accountability and there's homework and there are Q and a sessions between each session. So that's the latest development. So Jackie, you know, you've been there from the very beginning and um, I'm really excited to be able to start sharing uh, with the group, how that's going. Um, The one person that is from our group that is on that webinar, I'm going to actually request that he do a live with me as well. So people can see, you know, what it looks like, when you know you've done it what it looks like when you're doing it you know and what does it look like you know possibly when you're thinking about doing it so that's really great um i'm not sure that you answered this question already but you might may have done um you said something like what kept you from dealing with your time management before 
uh, one Annie, it was, you, you did mention something. Could you just say something really briefly again? Just remind me of what it, what it was you said that kept you from dealing with it before? Well, I, I, I think it, it, it was that there, there were a number of very ingrained scripts in my head. That was it, yeah. Um, and, and I, that, you know, they were just so many things that just like, it, it felt like it was just impossible to do things any other way. Mm. because I knew all these tips and tricks of how to do it and they didn't make any difference so right. what was the you know what was the point in even trying mm. and then there was the sort of if you're living in a state of constant overwhelm yeah. you just think well that's the price of being busy mm. and relatively successful and you know that's just the way it's got to be right because yeah. you know I don't I my type of work doesn't involve having a, a team of people I employ I can't delegate it I have to do it myself I mean right. I have to of course that's not entirely true I have to do some of it myself but yeah. it feels like a lot of it <laughs> so yeah. I just didn't I didn't you know it was all so familiar I was just saying the same old stuff to myself to yourself right and stuck stuck in a stuck in a rut right okay very good thank you so much for that um, you did mention that you've tried other time management tools and, and programs, so I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on that. That was pretty clear earlier in our conversation. What would you say the biggest impact of doing 180 has been for you so far? You know, you're like your best, your top three results or your best three results. Um, well, I've got four, actually. I hope that's okay. <laughs> well, the, the, fir the, first, the first one, when, when, when I did the two-day course with you, I, I went out and learned to drive. And that might not sound like much to anybody else, but I had been dithering about learning to drive for 52 years. Okay. Should, I, should I drive a manual? Should I drive an automatic? Do I really need to drive? Right. You know, am I ever going to be any good at it? I just kind of, anyway, a whole heap of, rubbish right um and uh, you know we 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 worked on it and i what i could see was that i just you know i just needed to make a decision mm. i just needed to decide that that's what i was going to do right. and um so i booked myself onto an intensive course and it took me a little while because i'm not naturally great at it and perhaps you know at such an advanced age it was bound to take a bit longer but um within six months i was driving Yay! so that was that was the first one and then um just I remember, in, you I know, that. we've been so i've i've got um my taxes done yes this is the 31st of january two years because i was behind of course so two years yes. worth gone into the gone into the revenue today awesome. right? and, and i've got the i've got the bookkeeper for the ongoing system you know? okay now again i've i've been in my line of business for 26 years and I've never got around to getting myself a bookkeeper. I've had an accountant, but not a bookkeeper. Right. So I've just been struggling with all that myself and then wondering why it wasn't, <laughs> wasn't happening very well. You know, so that's <laughs> a, um, I've, I have actually, we haven't even really discussed this one, but you, you, you said something and I got on with it and I, I've gone on my diet and I've lost two pounds already. So. Whoa! Cool. And that again, that's been something oh, you know I've been meaning to do for ages and ages, and didn't know how to do it, and so on. And then the and then the third thing is I'm I'm working on a particular type of career progression. Okay. And yeah. um um and it and it it was because we 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 talked also about um fitting what you're scheduling into you know it was kind of like what I realized was that part of my sacred scheduling had to involve putting a particular piece of work into it you know not letting anything else get in the way of it and right. so that's what I did and I got part way through the the job and mm -hmm. one of the other people in the case sent me an email and said you're ready to go to this next stage and I will I will be your referee right and that just that wasn't going to happen mm -hmm. because I would have been going home and fretting and do you know being distracted by other things and uh, just not getting on with what I needed to do mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, in line with the vision and it's not that I haven't sat down and kind of like what are my goals it hasn't worked like that Mm -hmm. um it's just it and that's perhaps made it a bit easier to just be in the moment. In the moment, I needed to concentrate on that piece of work. Right. And it worked. It worked. Brilliant. Put, put everything else to one side and do it. Wow, Jackie. Learn to drive. Got your taxes in. Let me see. How am I going to put my hand? Learn to drive. Got your taxes in. You know, uh, went on a diet, lost some weight, working on a promotional, uh, developmental uh, career move. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I'd say then that uh, there was this program is sort of kind of really effective, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 there's plenty more, but that'll probably do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Jackie. I just want to say thanks so much for taking the time out of what I know is your really busy schedule to have this conversation with me live on Facebook. You know, the um, the, the the professional courtesy is is not lost on me. Um, the fact that this is a very visual, you know, public platform is not lost on me. So thank you once again for doing this and for engaging and continuing to engage in the group. You know, you got those. I haven't seen those results in the group yet. So you okay, need to, okay. <laughs> you need to share those. I'll share. I'll share. Everyone's going to be so excited. And I've noticed that the, every time you do share about a result that you get, there's a knock-on effect, right? You know, then, you know, someone else comes up in the group and say, oh, yeah, that also happened for me. You know, I can see now that, you know, that there were things that uh, I hadn't been counting as breakthroughs or successes, you know. And then mm. when you mention it, then someone else mentions it. And then, you know, people get all excited and they start, you know, working again on what's what's to, to be done. So thank you so much for this time. Um, Jackie Gilliatt, barrister from London. And 180 degree time management client, former and current, and current uh, member of our Facebook group, The Gift of Time Management Live. Thank you. All right. (laughs) Thanks so much, Jackie. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye bye.